So I have a confession for you guys. Before I was a digital planner, I was all about my bullet journal. So here's the truth. I am certainly not an artist. If you take a look at my doodle a day picture, there is some very elementary things going on here, which I guess works out since I was an elementary school teacher. Drawing has never been a forte of mine. So today I'm gonna show you how I use my iPad to fake my way into being a better drawer. Make sure you like and subscribe and let's jump in. So today I'm gonna to use my fur child, Bailey, as my inspiration and try to design a sticker that reminds me of her. So I'm gonna start by opening up Procreate. But rather than just drawing right from the beginning, I'm gonna use a little bit of a trick and I'm gonna pull another picture from the internet to help us out. So I'm gonna simply go to Google and look for an image that I can use to model my sticker off of. So I see this really cute dog up here with the spots. So I'm gonna click on the image, add to photos, and go back to Procreate. Now now that I'm in Procreate, I want to bring that image into my layer. So I'm going to click on the wrench and hit insert a photo. And it'll bring up my camera roll so I can simply add that picture to my design. Now I want to make it take up pretty much the entire screen because this will allow me to get more detail. Now here's where the trick comes in. Essentially, I am going to be tracing this image, but Procreate makes this much easier. I'm gonna click this magic wand. This is for the adjustments. There's lots of different options we're gonna play around with here, but the very first one is called opacity. And once I click on it, just by swiping left and right, I'm gonna change how see-through my image is. So if I go all the way to the left, you can't see it at all. All the way to the right, it looks like a normal picture. So I'm gonna bring the opacity way down so you can just barely see my image. Now what I wanna do is open another Another layer. This is where I'm going to actually draw my image. And I like to start when I'm looking at clip art images, I usually grab black and then I'm going to go to my brushes, choose calligraphy and grab that monoline brush that I've talked about in the past. This is one of my go-tos when I'm starting a new drawing. I'm going to make sure I'm in another layer and then the easy part is you're simply going to trace the image. Now remember on Procreate by pinching, you're able to zoom up on an image, which allows you to get much closer. And so now I'm going to be able to simply trace the image of the dog. Now remember just by clicking with two fingers you're going to be able to erase and try again. Also remember you can spin the image to really line it up the way you want to. When you do have lines that overlap a little bit, you're gonna be able to erase and clean those lines up so it really doesn't need to be perfect because you can do a lot of cleaning up. So now I've got my dog's nose. So now that I've got my dog's nose, you can see if I go back to my layers, I'm able to turn off the original drawing and all you see is the dog's nose. So this is the idea behind this. We can trace an image, turn off that image, and then use it as we see fit. Now do remember that a lot of the images you find online, people have copyrights too, so this is a great strategy for personal use, but you want to make sure you're not tracing someone's image and then selling it as your own. So I'm gonna go around and finish tracing the rest of the dog. As I'm finishing up tracing the dog, if you recall in the beginning of this video, I talked about how I loved how the dog's face looked and his body and his tail, but I didn't love the spots. So notice that as I'm tracing it, I'm just leaving those spots out. And that's the great thing about drawing on Procreate and using this strategy is you can take something that's on the internet and change it just enough to match what you need. All right, so there's my dog. Now before I show you how we're gonna color and continue working on this, I do wanna take a little bit of time to clean up my lines. So I'm gonna go back in with my eraser and make it the smallest setting and just go back in and go into any of these areas where you see a little bit of line overlapping or a little bit of line gap. Now 
And there we have it. I now have my little dog ready to go. Now if I go back into my layers, I can turn off that bottom image and you can see my drawing, which is essentially just a trace version of something I found on the internet. Now I can go through and actually start to color my dog. So there's a few different ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you just a few of them. So I'm gonna start just by choosing a color that I like and dropping it onto the area that I want it to be. Now, so long as it's a closed figure, it'll fill that entire area. Now another little trick I'll show you for pulling out colors. If I go back to that image that I created initially, move it off to the side now, I can go back to my little magic wand and bring the opacity back up. And now I can pull colors from it like I've shown you in past videos just by holding my finger onto it. So if there was a color in that dog I really liked that I now wanted to use in my sticker, I simply hold my finger down and you'll see that that color is selected. Now I'm glad this happened because I want to show you how to fix this. Essentially what has happened is I've tried to fill in the body, however somewhere in the body there is a line break. So it is actually filling in almost the entire palette minus the tail and the paws which seem to be closed objects. So somewhere in this drawing there is a break. So there's a few ways to get around this when this occurs. I'm going to go back to black and grab my pencil and just start tracing over some of the areas that look like it may not be totally closed. I have a hunch it's somewhere in the paws. In fact, if I look right there, there seems to be a little bit of a gap there just because there are so many line breaks there. So I'm gonna just quickly zoom in on my paws, make sure they're all closed, and then we'll try again. So this is one thing you can do if you notice your entire figure tries to fill in. Let's give that a go. Pick that color up again and drop it. And there you go. So I've fixed whatever the problem was. I have found that when I do much more detailed drawings, it can be really hard to fix that fill feature. So there is another thing you can do. And to do this, I'm actually gonna create another layer and I'm gonna make sure that it is underneath my current drawing because this is gonna make it easier to color in. So I'm gonna simply go through and kind of start the coloring in process. So I do wanna be careful and not cross that line, but because I am under, the line, you won't see a lot of overlap of colors. It almost creates a little bit of a barrier as I'm coloring it. So I'm doing it very loosely on the inside but being careful on the outside and just making sure that I'm going around the entire layer. And my goal here is not to color in the whole thing by hand but instead to create an outside layer that I now know is closed because I've gone through multiple times and I'll be able to fill that in afterwards. So I'm going to keep going around. And then if you see, now I can drag and drop the color and it'll actually fill the area. So those are the two ways that I'll fill in if I notice when I try to fill in colors, it's not working. So I'm just gonna quickly color the rest of this dog. And there we have it. Now we have our little dog, just like we found on the internet, but I was able to recreate it without the spots on top to make it look a little bit more like my dog. So this is one way you can use that opacity layer and an image on the internet to recreate something even if you don't have a lot of drawing skills. So this is one thing you can do if you don't feel like you're a good artist. But let's say that while I love the dog's head, I actually want him to be sitting. So now I can recreate that same dog in a sitting pose by using another image online and start a new picture. So I'm gonna open up a new canvas, insert a photo, and I'm gonna bring in two photos this time. So first I'm gonna bring in this picture of the dog that I like in terms of the position that he's in. And then I'm gonna bring in that picture that I just had because I liked the head that he had. So for now, I'm gonna make that picture small and off to the side. And you'll notice when you bring in pictures, it automatically puts them in different layers. So I wanna make this one more opaque. I wanna show you another way you can do this. Instead of clicking on the magic wand up top, you can actually open your layers, click on the letter N, and it'll bring up a lot of the options for that layer, including at the top the opacity so I can bring the opacity down. And now I wanna make sure that I'm in a new layer and I'm gonna start tracing over this dog just like I did before. So I'm gonna go through and sketch out this dog now. Now the big difference here is because I like the body of this one but not the head, I am going to just sketch out the body of this dog and wait for the head. So let me finish up real quick. The other nice thing about using images from the internet is you have the ability to use them as a base but change them to fit your needs. So for example, in this image, I really don't love how short 
the tail is because my dog has a huge tail. So I'm actually gonna recreate a tail that matches a little bit more of what I have on my dog. Now that I'm done with the body, I'm gonna make the opacity of my other dog layer go down and then start to line it up with the body that I have now drawn. And once I kind of like how it looks and go through the same process of tracing again. You can start to see why the strategy can be so helpful if you find that you don't have the greatest drawing abilities or even if there's something that is hard for you to draw compared to other things. Using an image from the internet, you're able to really create and make what you want of it and use it as a base. I feel like artists do this a lot by looking at an image. The only difference is on the iPad, we're actually able to put it underneath our drawing to use as the starting ground. While I said in the beginning, we wanna make sure that we're not selling products that we're directly tracing from other people, there are ways that you can use this technique just to help you with problem areas of your drawing. So I've kind of decided that I like the shape of the eyes, but I didn't really like how the people looked, so I'm really creating my own look here. All right, so there we have it. There's my little dog hybrid. I see the resemblance to my own dog. So I was able to bring in different images. I had three images total, as well as my own creativity used to create this picture. So when you wanna bring them into the planner, you wanna make sure that everything is off except for the actual sticker that you've created, including the background. And then you're gonna click on the wrench and you're gonna hit share, and then you're gonna export it as a PNG. And if you're working on your iPad, simply save it to your camera roll, and then we'll hop back over to my planner. Click on the little camera or the picture up top, and there's the little sticker that I've created. And there you have it. Now, even if you do not have great artistic ability, you're able to create drawings of any kind of figure you want, even if it's something that's a little more complicated to draw, just by using that opacity and layers in your Procreate app on your iPad. I hope you found this useful. I'll see all of you in my next video.